Hello, there we go. Welcome to Performance Check. My name is Rob. And this is something a little different. Uh, now, I'm screen sharing for the first time, and I'm hoping it's working. I don't know why. For the, for the longest time, I've used Hangouts. And if you're familiar with my channel, you'll see that basically everything I do on this channel now is basically a, in Hangouts for either the Dias cast or for games. But for some reason, I've never actually screen shared. But I thought I'd give it a go tonight because uh, I had plans kind of fall through. So I was left with an evening where I was like, hmm, what should I do? I recently remembered that uh, my copy of Wonder Draft, created by Mega Splute, I recently remember receiving an email telling me that the latest version of Wonder Draft was ready for update. And update I did. I haven't been using the software very long, but from the very brief time that I have been using it, I've been really impressed. I want to preface this video, preface this video with a disclaimer that is, I am in no way a competent map maker, really. If you want a really good map making video, head over to uh, um, WASD20, where Nate shows his magical skills. So anyway, I hope the screen sharing is working. I have the YouTube chat. I do not presume for one minute that Many will be joining me this evening. But uh, if there is anyone out there and you see that live chat, you could go ahead and let me know if you can see the opening screen of Wonder Draft. That would be magnificent. Um, I mean, it is difficult to tell. <laughs> it's very difficult to tell, actually, thinking about it. I wonder if I switch back to Hangouts, will it change on Hangout? Uh, hmm, let's see. Hmm. Well, this is the first time for everything. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if it hopefully works. And if it doesn't, then, well... Never mind, we can try again another time. So anyway, Wonder Draft. So for the longest time, I was a user of the free version of Ink Arnate, which is also very good software. I would say software easier, slightly easier to use than Wonder Draft, I think. Only, only slightly, though, because Wonder Draft is very easy to use. And I'm going to go ahead and just start trying to make a map. The map I will be trying to make uh, is uh, a zoomed in version of the rough world map I've made for my new setting, Godgrave. You can find a picture of it uh, if you go and like performance check on facebook.com <laughs> or if you are a member of the Absolute Tabletop community group on Facebook, you can go ahead and like that group Follow that group, and it is available in there also. I recommend that community. It's a excellent one to be a part of. So anyway, without further ado, let's get going. So very, very simple setup. I'm going to click on New. Gives you the height and width of the, the map and the resolution. Uh, templates. Uh, let's go full HD. Not 4K, there'd be little point doing that, I think. I'm going to choose landscape. You can either go portrait or landscape. And this is really cool as well. You kind of get like a, uh, mm, well, a theme, as it says here, a theme, a pastel theme, a warm theme, paper, imagination, feudal, eastward, black and white, adventure. Well, I'm going to stick with pastel because I tried it earlier and I really like it. It gets you a really rich blue at the beginning that... Uh, it's really nice to resemble the sea anyway. So after selecting those very brief uh, sort of settings, you then hit click OK. And then without further ado, ka -chow! we have a pastel blank canvas on which to work. Now, 
I love how simple the this setup is. You've got water up here, land, paths, symbols, labels, overlay. And it kind of those are the the basically the order that you use to make a map. Well, in my opinion, it is anyway. First, you start with your landscape and your things like that, and then perhaps your roads and paths, and then the paths that lead to, to the cities and the towns and dungeons or whatever. And then obviously you then label those locations, and then Kadoosh, you put an overlay over the top. Uh, and those could be hexes or squares or things like that. So anyway, I'm going to go back to land. And uh, I'll give you a brief insight as to what... So first of all, we got this just a landmass brush, which you can just click and drag, and then ka -chow, you've got yourself a landmass. And you can fill it in, and you can increase your brush size over here. Put that to full. You can very, very quickly fill in a large amount of land. There we go. Increase that down a little bit. Now, that's really fun. You obviously have your arrays brush, which is essentially the same. If you scroll up on the mouse, it's uh, the same as uh, increasing or decreasing the brush. So you don't have to always go over here. You can very, very quickly whack the size down. But for the time being, I'm going to get rid of that because the next thing I want to show you is my favorite thing about Wonder Draft. And it is the terrain uh, height tool, which essentially you can pull terrain from out of the water because, you know, that's what land is, essentially. All of the nations of this earth just stick out of the water. They just happen to stick out of the water. We're very lucky. Obviously, in the future, we won't be so lucky. But it's not that kind of stream. So anyway, with this brush, I can just hold the mouse button. And out forms a very natural looking land. It gets all these really natural, jagged shapes that makes the coastline look far more genuine. Now, I don't just leave it like that because I like to go back over it. But essentially, this is my favorite thing about the tool because it saves you having to go back over your coastline and give it extra jagged edges and things. Because I find when I draw one freehand or on different software, that's kind of what I've got to do. I've kind of inadvertently made a dolphin. Don't know if you can see it. There's its flipper. Another one behind there. And then a... There we go. Dolphin Island, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be my new setting. Oh, God. <laughs> there you go. I mean, no one said it was a healthy dolphin, but there we are. So, now I've shown you that, I can show you the, uh, well, it does the opposite function, essentially. This thing, you can do that, and it naturally erodes the land back into the sea. And again, gives you those realistic outcroppings and jagged edges from a real coastline. And you can change the roughness as well along here to make it even more coarse. Look at that. Um, but for now, I'll put it back to one. There we are. Oh, and then, of course, there's the final bit on this tab, which is sort of like your, you can choose what terrain brush to use. So this is kind of like an arid kind of deserty brush. And the really nice thing is the longer you hold it, the darker it gets. If you see over here, if I hold it just a little bit, we stay in that kind of shade. If I go over here and then just hold it down, now, it might not be my imagination, but that is darker. So you can actually fade in different colors, which I really enjoy. Like I can take the green there and just a slight click, and it merges into the already existing color pattern there. So maybe in this desert island here, there's a little bit of 
greenery here. And look how beautifully that fades in and out with minimal effort whatsoever. Well, there we go. Those are the simple land tools. Now, I wanted to show you those because, uh, as I mentioned at the top, I'm going to be zooming in on an already existing map. So I'm not really going to be using much coastline. But in this section, I can show you all the different functions, like the water function. I can show you how to make lakes and rivers and what some of the symbols are like. So with that said, we're going to fill in the map. I'm going to do that by selecting the biggest brush size there is and just washing it down. Oh, it remains. That's really interesting. The staining of the map remains. Huh. That is very interesting. Again, there's a very good reason for that. I just don't know what it is. Um, maybe I oh, can move it around a bit like that. Make sure the edges. Yeah, that'll be fine. How on earth do I get rid of that? There we are. That'll be how you pick the shading uh, color arrays. And I haven't used this tool in a long time. You can obviously tell I'm not exactly like super erudite on the matter, but uh, like it doesn't take, you have to be a, a rocket scientist to use it either, which is very helpful for, for someone like me who is definitely not a rocket scientist. Right, so I've filled in the map. So... I wish I could bring up a picture of the what I was going to replicate. But if I did that, you'd see how badly I was doing it. So uh, what I'm actually going to do... <laughs> no, it's just a kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm actually just going to bring up the image on my phone. So this map is going to be for a future sandbox game set in my setting of Godgrave. Now, I have been deliberately trying to stay away from doing too much preparation on this on this game. If you listen to the Dyer's cast, where I chat with my good friend Lloyd, we talk often how it sometimes it's good to allow the, the you know the world to grow organically with the game. Therefore, the world is always growing in a direction that is pertinent to the kind of game that you're playing. Fairly simple, right? But there's a big old section of my brain that just digs drawing maps and world building and thinking of names and thinking of cities and stuff like that. And as we approach the potential starting date of this game, I wanted to have an up-close map for the area they're going to be getting to be starting in. Now, I can see that there are some maps, some maps, <laughs> some mountains that are uh, going to be sort of northeast of this particular world, or this particular area of the world at least. So, I want some mountains. I'm clicking on the symbols. And as you can see, very handily, there's a symbol tool for castles and trees, mountains, and then there's erasers and things like that. And a move function. So once you've placed an icon, you can then grab it and move it if needs be. There are some things on this, uh, this program that I haven't worked out yet. Like, there's a way of like changing the different watercolors and things like that that I just haven't gone into yet. I'm also aware that my laptop appears to be making a horrendous noise. Now, Wonder Draft isn't especially the most taxing piece of software to be using, but we are talking about my laptop, which, while it's a fairly powerful laptop, it's also insane. I believe that there's a ghost living in it a ghost that doesn't like me very much. So if I do disappear, rest assured it is because my haunted laptop 
sent myself and itself reeling into technological oblivion. Now, I've clicked on the mountains, and as you can see, there are symbols for all kinds of mountains, and there's a few extra little details that have been put in here with the update. There are clouds here that, you know, you can put around your mountains, I guess. And those weren't there before. That's nice. If I ever come to make a map of Far Wide from Law Keepers, I can make the cloud march look a bit more cloudy, which is great. Now, there are different types of maps. Now, some of them are blocked, and some of them match the color, or whatever color that they're placed upon. And I know for a fact that these playful, jagged peaks do just the trick. Now, the scale is up full, and I put it up full because I want this to be a very zoomed-in map. <laughs> that said, that isn't a particularly large section mountain, but, well, to be fair, that'll do, to be fair. That's fine. To be fair, I said that a lot just then. That was weird. So anyway, uh, it's great using these tools because you can essentially place objects just like you're painting. You can hold down the mouse button and drag and look. Beautiful mountain range. Arguably a bit too perfect here, I'd argue, but you know, you wouldn't be rushing. And you just hold the button and away you go. That's really good fun. Ladies and gentlemen, my new world. A mountain game. That would get quite repetitive, I think. So uh, the erase function is pretty cool uh, for the, uh, the symbols because you can actually categorize and filter what you can delete with your eraser. So say, for instance, I've done a nice forest here. In fact, I'll show you. I'll pick any tree, same as the mountains, just a menu of different types of trees, matching different themes. We'll go with just this for now. To see all those, look, just the same. Put a nice wedge of forest in between all those mountains. Now, if I just had the, uh, the filter on the eraser for everything, all, then everything will be erased uh, with that function. But say I want to get rid of the trees, but not that mountain range. Simply uncheck mountains and drag the eraser over the area where all other items are and gajoom, they're gone. The mountains remain. Isn't that handy? Anyway, I'm going to put mountains back on because I need to get rid of these because I need to uh, there we are, increase the brush size to max. There we are. I now need to make a better mountain range than the one I did before. I will take a little bit more care. Hopefully, 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 it will net excellent results. So we go back to the mountains, playful jagged peaks. We're zoomed in as far as we can. And with a swipe here, there, there. Hmm. And the cool thing is that, that it kind of can take a guess if you want it behind or in front of the mountain. I believe if it's beneath it, it'll put it in front of it. It's above it to the side, it'll put it behind it. It's a nice little way to like layer your mountains there, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not quite sure I like that though. It's taking up an awful lot of space. But then again, you could argue that mountains are supposed to take up quite a lot of space. So we're gonna do that again. One more try, because I don't want to, you know, spend too much time on just one thing. Back to Playful Jagged Peaks. And I'm going to take it a bit further up. Now, I think I know what the problem is, actually. The placement density is a little too high, in which, the, however, you hold down, you know, the mouse button, however many mountains you get. If you lower the density, you get less mountains per drag. I believe that's a technical term. So get rid of those again. Let's give that one more go. One more go, I promise. And we'll just stick to what we have. So I'll just drag a little bit there. I forgot to lower the density. Okay. Oh, I quite like that, actually. 
Actually, you know what? I think I had it better the last time. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you learn by doing. There we are. Let's check it out there. Yes. Like that. Now, some of you are probably thinking, what's the difference? I don't know. To me, that just sort of looks like a bit, a bit more natural than just a block. Like it's a vein of mountains almost. Now, I need to have a bit of a, a ring here of the mountains because that's where one of the settlements that I'm going to place needs to sit. Just going to look at my reference here. Yes, I've actually kind of bloody nailed that, if I say so myself. In fact, the one thing I could do to... I mean, you have to take my word for it, unless you're looking at the uh, the previous map that I made. In fact, you know what? I could open another... I'm not sure if I can open another... Mm, we'll see. I'll show you later. We'll see. Uh, in fact, we can do a... a, a um, we can do like a comparison at the end i can think of words i see lawrence kenworthy is here thank you ever so much for dropping by man ah excellent lawrence says that there's at least one viewer for a few minutes and i can currently see wonder draft excellent so at least this hasn't been for nothing so far then says the possessed laptop, a millennial horror story. It certainly is. Um, if I go quiet, it's either because I'm vaping or drinking my tea. This is kind of a chill stream. I hope you might have noticed that by now. It's going to be fairly chill. Uh, just some Friday night map making. So the reason I've been very specific there is because, oh God, I've got a bridge there. Well, anyway, the reason I've been quite specific is because a certain settlement is supposed to lie here. And it's working title currently is um, Style Forge. Style Ferg, sorry, Style Ferg. But it is a place where stuff gets forged, I guess, so. I wasn't wrong. Well, I was wrong. Never mind. Now, as you can see before, like you can select your mountains and stuff. You can also go into your symbols tool and pick out castles. Now, for your bigger maps, you do have just simple symbols like this that you can place. Oh, they've added new trees as well. See, this is very exciting for me anyway. Let's see. Now, this is a bit too grand for what I need. It's a very grand city. That would be more like a Godgrave. Godgrave is the, the lost city. It's his own city-state, really. That's the plan, at least. So that's a bit too grand for style for Ferg. It's a new setting. I'm getting used to the names. Um, that looks pretty cool. Let's see if that's got a black roofed version. There we go. If I try and expand that as big as possible, there we are. That looks quite cool. So if I bring that down to about 60 for now. I'm going to rest it in the mountains. Ta-da! How great does that look? Now, remember, this is a very zoomed-in map, so I want to be able to see the buildings. Um, a localised map, as it were. If it were a larger-scale map, I wouldn't have as many, you know, obvious drawings of buildings, because obviously you're further zoomed out. That said, when I draw by hand, I like drawing castles. I wouldn't say I'm, like, amazing, but I enjoy it. And I usually have it like that. 
So a bit of a callback to some of my older maps when I was uh, playing D&D when I was younger. So Stalferg is up in the mountains, as we can see. And it needs ways for it to... Well, it needs a realistic position. There has to be a reason why it's up on the mountains. So I've decided that it's going to be a mining town with its own keep. Uh, and I think it has its own keep because it's become very prosperous because of the fact it's a, m a mining town. As it prosperous with a very high voice there. Oh! Um... So that said, it's going to need a way to get all of its uh, material from the mine elsewhere, which means rivers. And thankfully, rivers come from mountains also. So you click on water, and there are lots of different uh, tools that you can use. Water appearance. Now, I don't actually remember what this does. So I've clicked on it, and I'm just going to see what it does. Okay. I'm, oh, water appearance is in the hue and cut. Okay, I get you. Right. Well, I need water to change the appearance first. So you've got your rivers, which is a sort of click to another point and then click to another point. So I'm going to have the river come straight out like that. Woo! And then you click and then, oh, we can go in a different direction. That's doesn't look great doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up around to about there and then with a the right click you detach the river now i can't remember if on the original map i had a river there but it's nice to show you anyway now i've clicked it already so i don't think i can no i can't change it once it's set but again a really great tool just really well thought out because I'm going to do that again now, but I'm going to show you what happens if you change the meander distance. And the cool thing is when you're on a raises for its own, its very own tab, again, doesn't erase the stuff you've placed down previously. So this time I'm going to make the river a little wider because we are a bit more zoomed in. Mm, nine. Let's see. Gonna whack the meander distance up a bit as well, because that'll look like we're closer up to the river. Mm, that might be too much. <laughs> we'll see. Oh goodness. Right. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with this. Now obviously rivers get wider the the further they move across land. And this is a gradual move and click kind of deal for me right now. No, nope, can't go up. Looks weird if it goes back on itself. Voila. That looks pretty good. It goes a bit, hmm, almost a bit too small there. That's what she said. It's late, guys. Forgive me. Um, hmm. Now, that's the only thing. I can't edit. I can't select. Or can I? Can I select that water? No, I don't think I can. That's weird. There's a selection function there. Oh, no, it's not. It's a... Windrose move tool. What's Windrose? Hmm. Well, I could probably tell if I clicked on the help function, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, so instead, I'm gonna look to see at the image as to whether that river is in the right place because I do want it to kind of look the same. I want there to be a continuity there. Well, there has to, yes, there is actually bloody hell. Only I went a bit wrong. That river has to go a bit further. 
West. So that gives me the opportunity to <laughs> do another river. I will admit the rivers took me a little bit longer to get the hang of, to make them look the way I wanted them to look. Because this tool does allow you to do some weird stuff with rivers if you wanted to. Like, for example, click, 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 click. Click. Although, to be fair, on a bird's eye map, hmm, it's, uh, I suppose, you, yeah, yeah, you could use it like that, I guess. I mean, it would look a bit weird if you just left it like that, but there we go. Anyway. So I'll get rid of that again gonna go for it this time we're gonna we're gonna nail it a bit further to the west so we start we click we click we click oh we're going fast no no ruined It just looks a bit weird doesn't it that's the thing like the angle that the mountains are at and the building make it look that's a bird's eye river next to a you know a more angled view of the castle so maybe it's just a map looking from a different direction maybe that's what i'm just gonna have to settle in my mind Try that again. Take a bit more care this time. That is is better. And you know what? Just to make my life e my life easier, I'm going to go back onto symbols. I'm going to click the select button. I'm going to select this castle and move it up a bit nearer to that river. There we go. And then I'm going to move this mountain in because I like that mountain being there. Yeah, I... <sighs> Look at that. Quite happy with that. Um, and I'm going to put in some... We've got some playful jagged peaks. I'm going to put this in some playful foothills as well. Because I can. Nice to fill in the gaps in the mountains as well. Like, in fact, that gives it a much more realistic look because obviously the land would be rising the closer you are to the mountains. So just a few to accent the edge of the mountain. That looks spot on. Well, there we are. Now I'm going to save. Um, Belferg. Yeah. There we go. Again, don't mind me. Vaping and drinking tea. It's really good to be back on performance check. Doing stuff. I, uh, yeah, for those of you that didn't see my last video, I've been away for some time. And I'm remedying that. Now, the next thing I want to do is a forest. Now, I'm thinking of sort of like an evergreen vibe. Godgrave is filled with 
terrifying haunted forests because now the gods have fallen there is nothing to stop the foul forces of hell from spreading across the world and speaking of spreading across the world look at those sinister trees Now they look pretty cool, but I, uh, I think I need to do that a bit differently and maybe make. Oh shit! Took out a mountain there. See, I didn't, I didn't select the filter. Mountains, symbols off. Just trees, just the trees. Thank you. Shit. <laughs> Lesson learned. Back to trees. Gonna make them a little smaller. There we are. Try and make my placement a bit less. There we are. So it's going to have a bit of a stylistic look, this map. It's not going for your full on um, realistic looking map. And that's the thing. Like, this is the style I've chosen. Like, if you get Wonder Draft, which I really recommend that you do. I wish I was sponsored by them, <laughs> um, but I really recommend that you do. If you like what you, if you like the look of it so far, just get it. It's a one-off payment, free updates for life, um, and I imagine it'll only ever get ex more expensive the more updates that are given to it. So get on it. Um, oh, that's actually put it on the uh, on the mountain there, which is something I didn't want. There we go. But yeah, there are ways of making nautical maps. You can make it look like a Napoleonic map, like a World War One map, like high fantasy things like that. There's there's everything. They they've added uh, quite a lot of um, feudal Japanese uh, symbols and motifs and the like. I do like those black trees. They're very foreboding. Now, to the south of uh, Stalfog, there's actually going to be quite a lot of forest. So I'm going to up the placement density a smidge to one. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just give a few swipes like this. In lines, they say trees grow in lines, don't they? So, kind of spiraling out from there. This isn't gonna look. Mm. That's the thing, you know, when something looks natural and when something doesn't look natural, and that, dear viewers, does not look natural at all. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo that. <laughs> this map could end up looking terrible. I quite like the way that it, ah, okay, so if I use that, I've got an idea. I use the mountain as kind of like my frame for my, for my trees. So instead, I'll come up across here. Yeah, so we'll go to about there, and then we'll sort of fade in like that that's gonna look way better already i can tell and then every now and then keep coming further in from the last edge made there we go so then it's kind of making a natural wedge of trees that i'm gonna hopefully gonna curve around in there, not, not dense enough there. There we go. That does look more natural. See, that's the thing. Like, I'm no expert, but I can use this to make a, a fairly, fairly good looking map. 
Well, it looks more natural. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. And then sort of, I'm gonna have it curve off around here to, there we go. That's better. That is better. And then you could argue that the people of uh, Stalfurk have actually felled the trees around the surrounding area, as you'll want to do if you are wishing to defend yourself. You don't want trees for your enemies to be able to uh, to camp in. And if they're besieging you, you don't want to be giving them that extra cover. You don't want to make it easy for them to have timber right at your doorstep to make siege weapons with. So... That's my justification for there being no forest in this bit here. There probably was at some point, and then they felled it all down. So that's actually not a bad name for this area of the map. This could be like the uh, the timber fields. Oh, I like that very much. In fact, before I forget, I'm going to make a, uh, a label. So this is pretty cool. You can choose your font. You can choose what kind of... Uh, thing that you're naming so at the moment there's city in fact i'll label stalferg first so i actually remember the town names so i've chosen town and i've clicked there and then it's just a simple case of deleting the label text and putting in stalferg now that's going to be a bit bigger simply increase the font size oh Now, that's probably a bit too big. That's a bit of a pain, actually, because the river is going to make that weird to read. But you can use these angles to spin the text right round, right round, like a record baby. Uh, and you can grab this to move it around static like that. You can also uh, change how the text curves by selecting curvature. And increasing it either that way or this way quite like that actually although i appear to have spelt it stalfug there there is an r in there that was silly <laughs> Stalferg. Stalferg. These names are sort of up in the air. That might change. I think German. I think I, I can't remember now. Maybe Ferg is uh, Forge in German. Because um, they've taken quite a lot of European sounding stuff for this. I want it to be quite close to European medieval history. <coughs> In fact, it's half medieval history, half um, half fantasy, I guess. Well, it's not perfect, but you know, you get the point. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes you just need a basic you know, a basic idea of what things are in your game. You know, it doesn't have to be a piece of art. I mean, it'd be nice if it was a... It was a piece of art. I wonder if I can make the S individually larger, if I just highlight that. No, you can't. Doesn't matter. Try some different... Uh, different font. That's the word. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, Lancelot is quite nice. A bit thin. Oh, I well, quite like that. Oh, that goes really well with those trees. Sort of janky writing. I like it. That's going to stay, that. I like that. In fact, it could be quite a rudimentary map. Perhaps this was uh, hastily drawn by a uh, 
a desperate man fleeing for his life, looking for salvation in an incredibly hostile world now. So anyway, that's my surrounding area of Stalferg. There's a river, there's the, uh, the foothills and the forests. What else? Okay, so towards the, the bottom of the map, there's going to be a lake. And upon the side of that lake sits another settlement called Fallen Edge. So I'm going to go back to water, and I'm going to see if I can use this lake tool to make a lake. Now, you've got to sort this watery appearance here, and you just sort of can just... Boom. There we go. And it randomizes shapes of water for you to layer over it. Until you get an interesting shape. Now, because it's on the edge of the map, it does kind of look like it's uh, a coastline, which I don't want it to look... I don't want it to look... That does look like a bit like a coastline, doesn't it? And it's not supposed to be. It's a lake. Maybe I need to put it higher. I will. I'm just going to undo all that. Um. Oh, no. No. The river. The river I work so hard on. Okay, land. <laughs> Screw it. Because I can make a new river off the lake that I'm about to make. So there we go. So about there. <clears throat> I'll get the water tab open again. Go to lakes. And I'll sort of do that. That doesn't look too bad. It's a big lake. It's a big lake. And you can increase the size of the water mass by doing that. Here we are. Now let's try using this. Water hue. Oh, wow. There we are. I changed the colors. Oh, that's cool. Maybe like a really dark. I like that. Okay. Now, uh... I've got to try and fill in. I don't want an island in the in the lake. Or maybe I should. Have, maybe there should be an island in the lake. There usually is. In any good lake, there's a mysterious island at its center. Well, I'm trying to make it one mass of water by doing that. There we go. And I might tidy that up a little bit, actually, because I think that. No, you know what? Actually, that looks that looks fine. I think that looks fine. Uh, I'm not so convinced by the angle the water, the river's hitting the lake, however. So maybe now I know the lake's going to go there. If I redo the river, I know, I promised I wasn't going to do the river again. But this is an opportunity. To get it looking even better. So now I know the lake's there. And I'm going to commit to that. And do you know how I'm going to do that? By saving. It's done. It's too late. It's done. It's saved. Yeah, that looks much better. I'm going to start way up here. Oh, no. Bear with. Bear with. Bear. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. No, this is just going from bad to oh look how we, look how we say oh no that's changing the width. Okay, forget that. 
and do <laughs> let's uh let's lower that meander distance i'll do maybe you can... let's try that I'm not convinced, guys. I don't know what it is. It just looks weird. It looks off. Hmm. This is when you need your experts in here. Maybe if I bring it up this way and then it angles down. Let's try that. Promising. No, it won't turn around. More. No, he's fucked it. Oh, I don't know, actually. That's hmm. no, it's going back on itself. It looks weird. Sorry, everyone. I just want to make sure it looks right. It's going wild with it now. Oh, you know what? He's only gone and bloody done it because <laughs> I could just go on the late function. And I keep clicking there until I get the shape that I want. There, look at that. Oh, he's bloody done it. Well, I'm much, much happier with that than I was before. So that's something. That's getting the save. Got Jack Roberts in the chat who says, good to hear from you again. I really enjoy your videos. Thank you ever so much. I've got to say, I was really overwhelmed with um, the lovely comments I got on the video saying that I'd come back. Um, that wasn't my intention of me putting the video up there. It was really just to say, look, this is what's going on. And if you like any of this stuff, this is it. Um, but no, it was really lovely to hear from all of you. So if, you, if you've sent me like well wishes, then thank you so much. And if you haven't, and if you've just been watching, um, thank you. It really means a lot. Um, just having a quick drink and a vape. That said, where has my vape gone? It's here. Packing the smoking kids. That's what I've done. Well, uh, vaping, but that isn't smoke. So, you know. So, I really love that text as well. I'm really happy with that text up there. Stalferg. Now, a settlement lies upon the bank of the lake. And that settlement is known as Fallen Edge. But first, I'm going to quickly out to this river and I'm increasing the width because as the river's coming out of the width, out of the lake, I imagine it's going to be a lot wider for the last chunk here. So I'm going to start inside the lake itself. Oh, piss. All right, we'll try that again. In fact, I'm starting where that river tra trails off and then I can sort of Nah, a bit too straight. Utmost concentration there. Um, I mean. That doesn't look great. I'm being really picky with the rivers. But it's got to be done. Yeah, 
are. Let's try that again. Maybe I'll try keeping it the width the same. Maybe that's why it was looking strange. Nope, but that's not what I wanted either. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's because it wasn't following the same angle. There we go. Okay. So that's looking all right. I wouldn't say it's perfect. But, uh, yeah. Apologies, my phone was next to my microphone. If that was loud, I do apologize. How unprofessional. We'll try and merge that water in a bit more into the uh, estuary. Ding, ding, ding. If you like Fry and Laurie, you'll get that reference. Bit of Fry and Laurie. Estuary. In fact, no, I'm going to tell you because it's worth looking up. Look up Hugh Laurie singing Mystery. And for those American viewers, you'll recognize Hugh Laurie from the acclaimed television show House. But before he was a household, get it, name in America, he was a British comedy sketch show star. I don't know why I'm talking about Hugh Laurie, but he, well, no, he's, he's a big hero of mine. He was in Black Adder and stuff like that. He's a legend. That looks great. Well, good enough. I'm saving that because I'm tired of doing water. Uh, for anyone watching, anything you want to see on this map, it might not make the final one because I've got to actually copy the thing that I'm, you know, that I've already drawn, but anything at all, let me know. Okay. I've got to get some new headphones for my laptop. Basically, uh, the headphones that I use in my everyday life are Bluetooth ones, but I have no way of making them work with the laptop, and also they're the ones that cover your ears. And I don't like that when I'm gaming. I like to have buds in my ears for gaming, just because they're a bit less, like, you know, not weighty, but ungainly i guess is the word and also you know a lot of the time when you're gaming and you've got a camera on like you don't want to have like big cyberman bars over your head and stuff do you which i had to at some points when my other headphones break because i always break headphones i burn through them like hell right let's see what else we can do Now, I'm, I'm looking at this image, but that's the problem. I've now got to fill in the details that aren't on the larger map. So up over here should be a village or town called Crow's Cry. Now, I might make it a bit further out just to space it out across the map a little bit. So I need another symbol. It's time for a small set. I don't want. I need to put this, the the um, the placement for uh, Fallen Edge as well, so I can do both at the same time. Two settlements. So, oh, I will definitely put some bridges in as well for the river. Let's see. I'm going for the black roofs again. And I'm going to go for a crow's cry I want to make pretty small. 
But the thing about Godgrave is that it is a world that is undergoing a spiritual apocalypse. And there's a lot to do with faith in this game. So I'm going to ensure that while this is a Hamlet block, Hamlets are only Hamlets because they don't have churches. And I'm going to be adding churches to this thing to make it look a bit more pious. So I think for Crow's Cry, I really like the idea of less like it being like in a Western, like a cowboy film, where it's just like a single row of houses, which this is perfect for. So crows cry as the crow flies is up here. And Fallen Edge is going to be a lake town, so it needs to uh, needs to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to take this one. Put it right on that bank there. But look how great that looks. And like, you, I mean, after watching this, you can tell how terrible I am at using this software. But still, even someone like me, like that, that looks great. I'm going to label them before I forget. Text. Town. And using that same font. Oh, what's going on there? Why is it giving me two? That's so weird. That's better. Rose, cry. There we are. Try and make that a bit more level. That's the other thing with the text. Like you've got to kind of have like a continuity with the text on your maps. So that's sort of the same. There we are. Down here, Fallen Edge. I'm going to change the curvature of that. So it wraps around to that nice bit there. And I swing it down to about there. Move it in. There we are. Maybe a little off the curvature. Oh. There. Look at that. This is shaping up to be all right. So I've now got to fill in this corner here with forest, which I'll do very quickly. I've got to try and speed this up a bit now. I was uh, taking it slow, one, because, you know, I'm quite slow. But also, it's helpful to see. Oh, those trees are way too big. <laughs> Shit. I have to try and make them similar to the uh, last ones. All right, undo. Um, what are we thinking? It's around that, isn't it? There we go. It's quite cool. Actually, you can measure the uh, the cursor against your already existing forest. Lots of haunted forests, like I say. Lots of very sinister places where if you go in, you don't necessarily come back. It's not going to be an entirely nice place to go. Which is a shame because forests are oft so wonderful. But not this kind of forest. Look at that! Look at that! And I think it might be prudent to have like the odd tree sort of Three of it like that, maybe. Mm, is that a bit too much? I think that's a bit too much. Oh, a bit big. Uh, you know what? Randomly deleting parts of it kind of 
that better? Be a bit more up here. And all I whispered that <laughs> as if it's some secret. There you go. I'll move them out. Try and make a natural kind of point. There you go. I I'm loving the look of this already. Like, I'm kind of happy with this. So, three settlements in there. Now, on the large maps, it, I could be forgiven for not having the smaller settlements. Apologies there, viewers. I was just having to fix a few things. Right, back in the room. I do apologize for the silence. Uh, I need to add a few more details. Now, looking at my map here, I haven't really got much else to go on. Oh, no, there is. No, there is. I've got it. I've got it. So some more foothills on the south side of this part of the forest. Trust me. Pend hills, pend mountains, playful hills. Well, I don't want these to be playful. I want these to be, oh, they're quite small. Okay. Maybe it has to be playful just to make them a bit bigger. Yeah, that's the way. Oh, no, no, they'll, they'll still, it'll still work. So I need like a proper, yeah, that's good. Because, dear friends, this is going to act as like a natural border. In fact, I like that. I might get rid of that because that could wrap around tighter on the forest. I'm trying to erase. Oh, that's why I look. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Back to Playful Hills. There we go. There's a natural border to the forest then that I very much enjoy. And then I can have it sort of like that. Oh, wow. I'm really happy with that. Now, I'm going to have to come up with some town names. So if anyone's still watching this, I don't blame you if you're not. It's uh, <laughs> I, uh, I haven't really done one of these before. But if you can think of some cool settlement towns that sort of fit the... Uh, well, I guess there isn't much of a theme between these names. But think German, think medieval, think gritty low fantasy. And in the meantime, I'm going to start shading because like, this is one of my favorite things to do. And you know what? It's so satisfying. It's so therapeutic. You go onto the brush in the land. Now, it's fairly green around here. So, look, I mean, if you look at here, you can, you can sort of make your own colors. If I click on that, like I can do my own, but I'm not going to just yet for that because... I can't be asked. So I'm going to go for that for now. 
and I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'll go like bright green. Let's try this. Okay, let's see what this looks like. And all I'm doing is just clicking across where I need that color to go. I'm not sure about the black forest with the green terrain though. Kind of maybe needs to be a bit harsher. Let's try the one further down. That's better. There we go. Instantly I can already tell. And it doesn't matter so much if you go over your edges, like look, I've got it onto the foothills there, but you know, you can just go back over it. But all around here, I want it sort of the same color. And in fact, I could probably do all of it around here and then sort of do my shading because i really like how you can shade in this there we go i've just realized i haven't done the top of that forest but you know what i kind of like that it, it's kind of tolkien-esque that it's sort of like this jutting jagged area of forest is sticking out there yeah i'm just gonna do all of that up here too There we are. You know, if it did all of it like that, look, there we are. So that's my base. Gritty, dark map. There we go. Look at that. You can see that in the book. Hmm. Apologies for the silence again. I'm just trying to work out hmm. how best to go about this. So down here, right in this corner, is the border to a land or an area of this particular area of the land, an area within an area called the Suicide Miles, which I want to be very grey and bleak. So a bit like that. There we go. Now, if I make the brush a bit smaller, I can sort of start accenting just the foothills. So I've got my block of shading there. And I know it needs to kind of sweep across there. So there's almost like a straight border there. And then go back to this color and start going to say start peppering in but it's too hard so you change your brush there we go sort of like a, just a bit kind of obvious change there I don't want it to be too obvious <coughs> pardon me so maybe a bit, a bit more grey there. Yeah, look, it's kind of, kind of getting there. It's getting a more natural blend. Well, it's not. It, look, it's not perfect, but like it, it's getting there. Back to a bit more of the green. And here. Mm. I don't know if that's working. <laughs> this trial and error, basically, to see until you get like the right kind of. But you can see this sort of like splotches of green, just merging into the grey there. So it kind of feels like it's like emerging two different, not biomes, but conditions of the land at least. You know, very gingerly tapping at them. Back to the gray. Make the gray more dominant. Further into the suicide miles we go. 
and it's kind of getting there. You see, you see what I mean, though. Like, I think I need a bit more dominance of the grey in the foothills, to be honest. There we go. And already, it kind of looks like it naturally filters into that. We're going to label it uh, once again. Uh, text. And now we're picking terrain, which will change the color and the kind of uh, font, I believe. But I quite like that font, so I'm going to try and keep it the same. Frederica the Great, was it? No. Oh, which was it? Sure, people remember and are screaming at me to tell me what it actually is. What Marco one was it? Well, Doesn't look the same, does it? In fact, maybe it's because capitals. Hmm, which one was it? There aren't that many to choose from. Oh, I quite like Antiquita. And maybe it's quite cool that it's a different font for like the terrain, I guess. It does mix it up a bit, but again, I want that continuity as well. For the life of me, I cannot tell you which one it was. <laughs> which one was it? It doesn't look like any of them. Maybe it's because it's terrain. It's slightly... Ch oh, there we go. <laughs> That's probably the last one I picked. I didn't do that in any order whatsoever, and that was stupid. So we're going to try and make that bigger suicide miles there we go 90 i that looks really impressive when it's like yes look at that And we're gonna we're gonna add a bit more character to the suicide miles by going back to the symbols, trees. I noticed earlier, and I'm sure you did too, Eagle Eye viewers, that there were different um they were like rotted trees. Yes, there we go. Look at those. Oh, they're much bigger. So Want it roughly the same height as that. Yes. A dead land. They're all the same tree, admittedly, so it makes it look a bit... I guess I could just... I've got to do it now, don't I? Now that I've thought of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot a few of these around. One, two, three, four, five. Pick a different one. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's all right, isn't it? Now, no one lives in the Suicide Miles, so we're going to have to make it look a bit more interesting by uh, adding a few more, uh, I don't know. I think there's a ruin in there. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a cool ruin. Oh, look. Oh, wow. They've added those as well. So they've added like really micro versions of towns. Oh, that is cool. Look, I could use those for some of the villages. Yes, in fact, I'm going to. 
Oh no, it's pencil. It doesn't take in the. Uh... Well, maybe it will. Let's see. If I place it, will it? <gasps> oh, it's like a sketch. It doesn't fit the theme of the other slider, so I'm not gonna. Ah. They are again. I forgot the church as well in Crow's Cry. Yes. Those trees are bugging me now. There you go, a bit more trees up there. I'm saving that. It's looking good. Back to ruins and things like that for the suicide miles. I like these cliffs as well. Maybe we could put some of these in the uh, by the river, maybe. Oh, you know, be cool about a cliff like there. Oh, look at that. Yes. And sort of make it look like it's a gully. Yes, I like that. That's that looks cool. sort of cap that up the top there and bring it home there so it's kind of like you're forced into that valley there to pass through the suicide miles that mm, you know what actually I'm going to get rid of I kind of prefer it just like that. That's obvious then. Oh, wow, look. A giant. It's pretty cool. Frank, the Desenzo, uh, T Desenzo is here. I'm sorry, I just butchered your name there, Frank. A chasm through the mountains. Not a bad idea, actually. Not a bad idea. Um, oh, the giant's still there. Uh, let me see. Let's see what I can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got sort of chasms like that. Maybe, uh, Mm, right, I'm going to save it because I might fuck this up, but I'm going to do this for you, Frank. I hope you appreciate it. Right. Filter off for all but mountains on the eraser. And I'm just going to go... Uh, uh. So, as you can see, if you manage to get through the forest, there is a secret pass that leads into the mountains. Which we're going to accentuate by. Let's see. Let's get those uh, cliffs back. Yes, look. You can see the valley sort of uh, coming up through this way. Oh, damn, that's helpful. And you can just sort of slot those together, those cliff faces. I really like that. That is cool. Okay. 
can't really find one that's like a straight on, but I don't I think that's enough actually. I think what I can do then get the mountains back playful. They've got to be playful, remember. <laughs> and sort of increase the size. There, that kind of alludes to the fact that you can get through the mountains if you try. Try real hard. You can push through in there and out through the mountains. Good suggestion, Frank. You get 10,000 XP for that. About the smartest a bit more. Da, da, da. Right, definitely going to try and speed up now because I'm taking a taking my sweet time. In fact, how long have I been going? Hard to tell. Right. How do we finish this off? Oh, ruins for the suicide miles. I keep forgetting. Apologies for the introspective silence there whilst I muse about how we're going to proceed. Because I don't actually know if there are any ruins. Now, the thing that is is worthwhile remembering with uh, Wonder Draft is that it is you can fully integrate your own uh, images into uh, into the uh, you know you mod it. You basically can just mod it. So you can basically have anything and input it into the map as a uh, like an image element. And I've just found an extraordinary looking mine. Oh yes, well that's exactly what I need. Stalferg, Stalferg needs a mine. So I'm gonna put one in there. <laughs> Oh, look, there could be a dead, creepy one up here. There we go. <laughs> There's some cool standing stones as well. Oh, that's what I want. Look at those bad boys. It's a henge. We need a creepy henge in the Suicide Miles. And it is the size of a town. Yes. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of the trees around it so it emphasizes it more. Oh, they don't count as trees? What the hell? Oh, they weren't in the tree. I thought they were weird because they weren't in the tree. Ah, uh, it's a sketch of a tree. That's why. Well, I think there are too many in there anyway. Now that I'm looking at it, it looks a bit too busy with trees. That'll do. Okay. So I knew there are ruins in the suicide miles. Let me see. I'm just desperately looking at the image that I have. Because, quite frankly, like, it's as George R. R. Martin said, not that I'm comparing myself to him, but, uh, you know, they said, can we blow up your, your map in the back of your book? Because we'd really like to sell posters. And they did that, and they blew it up. They blew up Westeros. And they saw it look, had quite a lot of blank spaces. So we had to make up quite a lot of stuff to go into those blank spaces. 
I just realized that there is another settlement. A settlement known as Black Hollow. And it's on the borders of the Suicide Miles. So let's go back. And I want this to look very different to the other settlements. Hmm. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, I've got an idea. I take that. I place it into that rock face there. I'm going to take a church, sort of put it there. Oh, no, even better. Even better. Hang on. I'm going to select the town. Try and merge it against the cliff face like that. No, like that. There we go. So basically where it was already, but never mind. Um, a bit closer, though, because now the church is high up, looking down upon the rest of the settlement. I love it. And that is Black Hollow. which I need to label. Back to the labels. And make sure it is not terrain, it is a town. I know the font now, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 oh, it's itty bitty writing, hang on. No, rolling the mouse wheel doesn't increase font size when you're on that tab. Never mind. Why does it keep going down? There you go. Do the old-fashioned way. What? It went to eight again. What the fuck? Right. Wrong do. Mm-mm. Black Hulu, Black Hollow, the space ship. I don't know. I'm kind of excited about this. Like it's kind of given this map has kind of given this area of the world. It's it's sort of personality. It's Grim as fuck. Creepy as well. I really like that Black Hollow is on that. That's just now informed me of that area, that town. I've not put any thought really into that town until now. And I now know that, that there's like going to be that creepy ruined church that sits on the top of the cliff looking down at the rest of the town. Uh I suppose most religions are well used to that. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Oh, let's see. Is there anything else I can throw in? You know what? Like, I, I might, I might call it there. I might do like a second, uh, a second stream at some point. Because I think I need to get better used to these tools. I reckon there's much more that I could be doing that I'm not. I imagine it must be very frustrating if someone's watched this and they're, uh, they know more than I do about this. Well, to be fair, if they knew more than I do, they probably wouldn't be watching. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I could put a bridge in. Hmm. There. <laughs> uh. Uh, 
I wonder what else I can do. Her tentacles come out of the lake, perhaps. Is that tent? Oh, that's like holding a ship. Jesus. It's more ocean. Okay, well, look, I think I'm going to call it there. But I think overall, like, it's really getting there. It's already like. You could do a lot with that. I'll tell you what, one thing, because I haven't done anything. I'll finish with this paths. I haven't done anything with paths yet. So as before, you know, you click on the tab, comes up with all your different options, your width, your roughness, what color. Now, I kind of like the idea of having a dotted, but it depends how messy it makes it look. Let's try and do a path from Stalferg to Crow's Cry. So Ideally, that bridge would be close. <laughs> he says, having just put the bridge there. Um, yeah, screw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that bridge there. That way, we go back to the paths. The paths. The paths. Go through the gate, and again, it's just like the rivers. Oh no. You know what? It might be better off not having the bridge there because I don't think... Yeah, the path's not going to go over it. path's not going to go over it, people. Uh, I think the path might be more useful than knowing where the bridge... Obviously, you're going to be like, obviously, there's a bridge there because the path goes over the water. Yeah. So I'll undo that. Back to symbols. Erase it. Bye-bye. Back to paths. And we begin. Let's go down here. Not bad. I think. Yes. Path that naturally follows the river. Oh, no, don't like that. To fall an edge. Banging. And I believe, yeah, let's just do it. Because uh, it won't be on this map, but there is a settlement that you can find if you've, oh, fuck, that's gone wrong. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, if you follow the river, essentially you will come across a new settlement called Wittenbeck, but we're not, that's not on this map. So there we go. That is a rough. Oh, well, look, I've joined the others up. Might as well do a nice path from Fallen Edge to Black Hollow. Yeah, there's going to be like a prospering lake. I say prospering. The path is going to sort of end there. There is no path through the suicide miles. Only the paths in your mind. There we go. So I'm going to save that. Uh, so that is Wonder Draft. Um, I highly recommend it. It means that if you're not, you know, super confident with drawing a map by hand, but or if you just want something that looks neat and consistent wonder draft is for you and it's always improving and if you well as soon as you sign up you're given an invitation to the private wonder draft reddit in which you can find all sorts of different features that you can install so no copy of one draft is ever the same
your copy would be very different from someone else's and so on and so forth. So thank you ever so much for watching. I will probably come back and carry on doing this. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. If you want me to change anything about the way that I've been doing these videos, please let me know. Because uh, I, uh, yeah, I've never really done one of these before. So hopefully it wasn't too dull. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to stop screen sharing just so I can say toodaloo. Oh, and we're back in the room. Hello. Um, so, yeah, uh, just the same. Uh, if you enjoyed that, then leave it a like. If you'd like to see more like it, then give me a subscribe. Or not. We're all friends here. Or are we? Take it easy. And I hope that all of your performances are up to standard. Stop the broadcast. <laughs>